Well, um, this might be a familiar sight. If you haven't watched it, I guess I'll link it. But, just to show you, in not the happiest at the moment. No crank. This is a key I just made. Well, uh, so here I've got a key to our daughter's X3 that um, I just made a video on just before Christmas. And at that time, the key that it came in with, it came with two keys. The uh, looks like the memory or the chips or whatever got messed up. Uh, I simply made a key thinking that that was all that the problem was. And about a week or so later, it gets towed back in because it's back to a no crank, no start. Now, something like this doesn't sit well with, uh, it wouldn't sit well with any shop. It's definitely not sitting well here at my shop, uh, considering the whole situation. Uh, being that we're having a frustrating issue occurring. We're having to tow the vehicle each time it doesn't start. Uh, you don't want to, as a parent, uh, not just for you know customer cars or so or whatnot, but as a parent, you just don't want your kid at, at, at some random place to where they're going to be stuck where the car won't start. So I'm in the doghouse. Mrs. D Tech said she's going to marry <laughs> Scott Kilmer, who's a real YouTuber. Uh, if I don't get this right, so hopefully we can make something happen this second time around. And um, maybe I'll keep Mrs. D Tech and have a child that doesn't get stuck at random places and has to keep getting towed. So let's see what the heck is going on. Okay, so just like last time, uh, let's go ahead and put this key in. This is, again, the one I made. If I remember, this was key number seven. Let's put that one in and we will turn it on and scan the vehicle. I'm gonna start from scratch just because I did scan it off camera when it came in just to uh, be disappointed. But let's take this right along together. I'll show you what uh, codes it has and go from there. All right, and so. I'll jump straight to the EWS, which is one that we are concerned with, and let's take a look at the trouble code. All right, so, um, again, this one, as I told you, that was there before, but it had been there while the vehicle had operated fine and dandy. Uh, I'm not too concerned right now at the moment with that. The one that is causing our trouble, key number seven, incorrect random code. So. This is now a second tow-in with the same situation of a key not being basically kind of recognized fully because of its code not being correct um, and it's for the key that we made. So again, it identifies the key number, but the code in the key is not correct. It's, the EWS is not happy with the key information so <laughs> that's two separate times same trouble code situation with separate key uh, numbers having to fail in the same way so there is something going on now originally kind of we're blaming it on possibly aftermarket keys but I gut feeling and think there has to be something else going on especially that quick it was about a week's worth now let's see if we go again just live data to confirm um, key identification is okay and the random code of course it's not key number seven key transmits so all that's still good our issue is that right there the random code 
but something seems to be continuous and keeps happening and it's just not normal. It, it should not be doing what it's doing. So now, what do I do from here on out? I am basically stuck with a car that doesn't crank, doesn't start. Um, I could potentially, most likely, in order to get it cranking, started running, is generate and make another key. But the way that it seems to be going is it'll be back in a week or so with probably the same situation. And the other problem is, is that each time I make a key, I keep eating up and using up one of these slots. Um, this is the, not the correct current file, but this is the one that uh, I started with, this is the original one. So we started with three consume spots from the factory, and so far, uh, on the file that's in there, which is not this one, keep that in mind, I can pull that up later, I believe I've used up nine, eight, seven, um, obviously three, two, one. So we, we're, I'm starting to run out of slots, not to mention eating up keys as well. So I don't want to make another key with the potential of a third key being basically uh, dropped out in a week or so and losing out on all of that and creating another uh, situation where the car is not going to start wherever it's going to be and having to tow it. So I need to find out what is going on. It just want to again bring up the the file that's in there now. So one, two, three, four, five are used. So I've got yeah, I got five left, but I don't want to keep using them up if I don't have to. Now this is getting so frustrating right now to the point where I even started thinking and considering about just doing an immobilizer delete. Now how you do that is basically you take the DME and within the DME file you basically erase or delete the need for it to look for a good, um, let's call it, uh, signal or uh, information from the EWS. It just completely disregards that and it'll let the engine start so it'll activate uh, spark and ignition so on and so forth once the starter turns over. And you can see that by I had exposed the uh, the DME, which is down there. Pulled it out, checking the numbers, trying to see what the procedure is for that. But it just wasn't sitting 100% right with me. And then the final kicker was that even if you were to do that, to erase the immobilizer in the DME, this vehicle still would not start run and drive. And the reason for that is because the EWS controls the starter, not the DME. And in order for it to control the starter, it has to be happy with the key. So, <laughs> we, at that point, would still be stuck with a DME with no immobilizer with a car that wouldn't crank because the key and EWS are not happy. So that's definitely off the table, which means I still have to truly find out what is killing these keys. Okay, and so being that I've got a situation that I, I need to figure out what's going on, uh, today, this morning, I decided to dig through my uh, BMW books, as I remembered, one of them had information on EWS. And sure enough, this is the one. Uh, this, these you get when you go through training with them. Uh, and this one does have, if you look there, one of the tabs, along with the others, um, is EWS. So this explains everything related to EWS systems and it goes over this will go up to the 3.3 which 
this currently has a 4.4, obviously. But the 4.4 is obviously derived from the 3. So it, it was just, I needed to find out what was going on. And so it was kind of going back to basics as far as trying to uh, break down the system again. And particularly what I was interested in finding out was what the common situation was, which it keeps relating back to a key problem, a key code problem. And so just to share some uh, quick small information here from the um, training books, uh, and, and it's just interesting to go back and read all this and get in-depth detail information about the system. And so this is basically what we do, deal with, uh, you know, nowadays this is the chip that uh, is in the keys that we uh, ended up programming. And so that's the actual EEPROM. There's the uh, coil that will uh, induce uh, power into the capacitor. That powers up the EEPROM. And then that's how, with this inductive coil, it basically helps uh, transmit or receive information from the uh, ring around the, basically, this guy here, around the ignition lock cylinder which this itself is an inductive coil also. And so it was just going through the different uh, versions. You know, this is 2, uh, EWS2, and so on and so forth. And early on, they had a separate module that would transmit and receive the information and then send that to an actual uh, EWS. So it was the uh, module there. And then... Um, it started to uh, get a little bit, each version would get more elaborate and in-depth or difficult for anyone to do anything with. Um, and as you can see, they started to add uh, codes in here that would match codes with the key. And that's where I, I started to want to try to dig information related to that. And so just a quick breakdown. Again, this is an early version, but it's similar to what we have in EWS 3 and 4, uh, with the exception of this module is now incorporated into the EWS, which I'll show you. But basically what happens, you put the key in, you turn it, it uh, sends power to the transmit receive module, which once that's powered up, it'll send a uh, signal through this coil the uh, antenna ring at a 125 kilohertz AM signal to the ring antenna and it'll induce voltage in the coil of the key power of the EEPROM once the EEPROM right here gets woken up it'll send right back through the ring antenna come down to the uh, <clears throat> transmitter it re the EEPROM sends this, this uh, code and then this will send it digitally to the EWS. And the EWS wants to match it within its list of codes. And once that code matches in there, then uh, these that's happy with the code from the key. Now, if you can see in class, I wrote, uh, they told us there's 50,000 codes in the EWS module. And then now, once we get into 3.3, uh, they introduce what they call the uh, rolling code. So beforehand, the uh, EWS used to have, let's see, um, the ISN signal and used to send that to the DME and so on and so forth. Um, after that, they added also in the DME and also the EWS, a so rolling code uh, uh, system. And so I was trying to, again, find out what the, the issue is with the key code issue. Now, this uh, rolling code that is now, uh, let's see, referred to for the, uh, in the DME, that is to be matched within the two and then go ahead and activate basically the uh, spark and ignition. But if you 
come back here to this workshop hint. If the starter engages, the following inputs are functioning normally. The key, the code function, the, the you know, trans range, engine speed. So it, it's not going to uh, engage the starter if there's RPM. Uh, obviously, it needs to be in the correct gear. Uh, the code function and the key has to be good. So if the starter engages, but it doesn't uh, start and run the engine, then we're going to have a rolling code issue with the DME and EWS. But since we don't even engage the starter, which is right here, so this is input, process, output. Uh, the input to the EWS between the key code and EWS is not correct. And so the starter is not being controlled. So it's not even a uh, rolling code issue between DME and EWS. It's an issue between the key and EWS. So um, that's what basically uh, I got out of this. And I was trying to find out if there's a way to resync the key code with the EWS, like in the way that I showed you about syncing the uh, DME and the EWS procedure that the tool has, which basically realigns the two codes in each module as uh, code number one, which is the starting point, and they count up from there. But there isn't anything in the tooling that is letting me to uh, kind of reset or realign the key code. Okay, and so after reading up uh, a bunch on the EWS system, trying to get re-familiar with it and trying to figure out the, the whole key code thing, um, and just for now not finding a way to kind of resync the key code with the EWS, get those two realigned, since it seems that that's what we keep um, losing. The EWS keeps losing the code from the key, or the key is just not sending the correct code, so on and so forth. So th that that's the issue, and I can't find a way to sync those. But the one thing that I did notice, both visits, so the first time and this time, when I had the key on and was scanning it for codes, the voltage level kept dropping, and it got so low to the first time, the first visit, uh, the dome lights started kind of flickering. And that's what kind of threw me off and made me look at the voltage levels. And it had dropped pretty low. And if I remember at that time, it got down to maybe about 7 volts. But what was odd, the dash was still lit up kind of decently bright. Not to the point where one visually would think the voltage level was that low. Uh, and obviously the only reason why I knew is because I noticed the dome lights acting up. And I think I started to hear like a buzzing noise. And so I got my meter, checked it, and the, the level was just really low. So uh, in that last, basically that last video, that diagnosis, I charged the battery up for a long time. It came up to a good level. And I kind of just brushed that off to the side because I clearly had a key that, uh, two keys at that point that weren't being read. This time, again... Uh, it got dropped off, got it inside, was scanning it, and I noticed, again, the voltage level started creeping down pretty quick uh, for the short time that I had key on and trying to uh, look at the live data, so on and so forth. And again, it got down to about 8 volts. And so those are two things that this time around jumped out at me and is, is sticking in my head about... It's coming in with a no start situation. Both times the key codes have been lost. Both times just key on and doing some diag with scan tool. Our voltage level starts to creep down really, really low in the, you know, eight, seven, six volts. Uh, and so that just seemed very, very odd. So if you guys remember, I was telling you about how I was noticing on both visits, including this one, obviously, that the battery 
seemed to be at a low level when the vehicle came in. Um, so because of that, I was charging it as I was uh, trying to do some, some scanning and while I was doing research and stuff like that. Um, I charged the battery up. I let it sit overnight and now I did a battery test. So this is the level of where we're at now. So um, it's at a good high enough level enough for me to basically start testing to see if there is a draw. So as far as where I'm going with this is I being the fact that it's come in and the battery was kind of low uh, both times that the situation has happened. I want to check and see if there's a draw and the reason why if there is a draw can this be the cause of what is basically knocking out the key code so my theory is that the battery level gets so low let's say again seven volts and that EWS is operating at that it gets fed constant 12 volts and then the switch key on 12 volts if the constant is down say 7 volts when we go ahead and try to ask for the EWS to provide power to the inductive coil to start communicating with the key and also start operating uh, again with that lower than normal voltage is that what's basically wigging out the EWS and making it lose its kind of memory real quick and losing and forgetting and misaligning the key code or not recognizing the key code so on and so forth something to that extent i want to see if that is what is causing this so not key related not even ews related directly um it's I think a cause of low voltage being caused from a battery drain and so that is what I'm going to set up and check for now and I'll let it sit and see if it is at a high level of amperage draw. Alright so I just connected the scope in series to measure the amperage and I've got all the doors latched that I need. So what I prefer to do is um, simulate getting in the car, cycling the key back off, then latch the door and hit the locks. And after that, I'll let it sit. So this vehicle does have a certain time period for it to go to sleep. It's about 16 minutes. So we'll wait that time and recheck and see what our level is. Okay, so we are just past the 16 minute mark. And uh, on this generation vehicle, the um, older ones, you want to look at the shifter light. If that's off, then the vehicle is asleep. The uh, newer ones will have the light on the star stop switch. Once that is off, the car is asleep. So that is another uh, factor to look at to kind of confirm if the vehicle is asleep. Sometimes if it's a certain module or something just really bad is waking the car up, we're keeping the car awake, the light will never turn off. Uh, that's a dead giveaway of a draw. So let's uh, check. Uh, we confirm up front, we know time frame, and we are at 80 milliamps. So let's lower the scale at this point. Let's see. And let's change our time. And it's actually creeping up uh, close to 100. <clears throat> and, uh, let's see. And as you can tell, it kind of 
has a repetitive look almost uh you know a wavy up down up down up down and it's creeping up there so i'll uh try to put up a picture of the spec for this chassis this year this make model uh around the max level that bmw wants it at is 40 40 milliamps so we're clearly double the max they're wanting so that does confirm there is a draw there's a draw with this vehicle looks like over time maybe a week's worth of period of this constant draw and it'll depend on driving uh, amount and how she's been driving the vehicle and so on and so forth obviously the more starts and drives the uh less time there is to draw if the vehicle sits longer the more time for a draw so um it looks like that is possibly what is going on that the battery gets drawn down due to a draw which then drops the level down of the EWS and then gets all whacked out when trying to start the vehicle and read the key. Now one thing that I was kind of considering about possible draw is she has this um, adapter it's a Bluetooth adapter and if you see how it blinks on off on off and if you remember we on the uh pattern back there it's kind of a wavy pattern uh, so this is the first thing that i want to unplug because i'm wondering if that pattern is that basically blinking and there we go look <clears throat> we've gotten rid of our wavy on off uh, pattern and we've dropped down uh, a, a decent amount now that's still above the supposed max level of 40 so it looks like we're creeping between 50 and 60 milliamps which uh, I probably wouldn't be comfortable in this chassis vehicle this would be more in the let's call it not so smart car basically not like the high-end 7 series where it has a ton of modules this is more analog type where it should not be that high so um what it looks like is going on is that there is a draw from something on the car and the bluetooth adapter when plugged in, just raises that level of draw by that much, by the, say, 20 or so milliamps. So that Bluetooth adapter just basically escalates the situation a little bit higher because it's on top of the draw that seems to be there from something else. So that's not the cause of the true drain. It just added to the drain is basically what I'm saying. So now at this point, um, I've got this set up. As you can see, cause this is where we will check our circuits for the draw. Uh, hopefully we could find something without getting too involved. And um, we'll get set up for that here next. Okay, and so the way that I go forward now to... Uh, find the draw is you just want to tap into the two metal portions of the fuses with your meter leads and you want to set the meter to millivolts and you want DC so it's on AC right now switch to DC and now we'll go through each fuse and see which one has some uh, voltage activity so I'll stop here so I'll start here at the top right and that's all you want to do is tap each one And when you make contact, 
Yeah, I'll try to show you here. The meter will read zero zero. If you don't have good contact, I'll try to. It'll start just waving all over the place until you make contact. So, if you make good contact and you have activity voltage on there, which will be steady, should be steady, then you know that's the circuit with the draw. Okay, so I tested all these fuses and none of them had voltage activity, let's call it that I could find. And so just to basically double verify, I basically removed this whole fuse panel from the circuit with that uh, voltage supply cable there. And with that removed, the uh, amperage draw was still the same. So that just double confirmed my meter readings uh, in case you you know you, you're questioning that uh, so that just double verified that the other thing that I did was there is just a small few amount of fuses here but uh, these are all gonna be mostly you know engine related uh, I would assume but even then um, this is the supply. It comes from there. It's that skinny wire there. It comes across and feeds this panel here. Obviously, I've unplugged that. Draw still there. Um, the other portion, the big fat cable, comes up for this jump start lug. And then it feeds starter and alternator. Uh, I put my hand on the alternator. It is not hot. So I am going to assume, and the alternator is right there. I'm just going to assume that it's not anything drawing off of that big fat cable. And so now I moved on to the back again. And was kind of just sitting there trying to figure something out or a plan. And so, um, this is where we're floating that after I removed that front fuse panel. Now, yes, it dropped a little bit. It was jumping, what, 50 to 60. Uh, right now, we're still above 40. We're creep up close to about 50 or so, 52. But we are still are in a place where I'm not completely happy. The other thing that I noticed, it has a repetitive pattern. So it drops, comes over, has like a rise, and then comes over and drops. Comes over, has a rise, comes over, drops. So that tells me, uh, you have to kind of analyze the pattern. That's why I changed the time frame uh, when I do draws. Because, a say, a alternator or... Something that was just constantly shorted, let's call it. It's going to be a constant, just dead draw. When you have repetitive activity, like we are seeing here, it's going to be like module related. It, it's not going to be a constant dead short. And so basically, uh, you have to follow your battery supply, your cables, and they obviously distribute there's multiple red cables there they go different places and so I was just I removed this cover for that fuse panel the big big fuses and <laughs> I noticed that little red cable spliced right there and then um, if you see in there let's see I don't know how well I can get a shot of it. But back in there, there seems to be, looks like a GPS unit. Now I did get this vehicle from uh, one of my friends. He does have a car lot. It was on his lot. Um, 
on this. So I'm wondering if he put that GPS unit. Now, right now, at this point in time, I'm hoping that is what's causing the draw. So I'm simply just going to cut that red cable. All right, so let's hope this is what it is. So I'm going to three, two, one, clip. Well, I didn't cut it all the way. There. <laughs> oh, amazing. Simply freaking amazing. Alright guys, so it's been about 20 minutes. Uh, we are clearly down at uh, 20 milliamps. So 25 to be exact. And so that's a perfect, good, acceptable level. Let's go ahead and plug the Bluetooth in. See what we jump up to just to have an idea. That is where that was coming from. So that's from that guy. And <clears throat> okay, so look, we've jumped up about uh, let's say about thirty milliamps. So that's a that's a pretty decent jump. Um, I think I'm gonna tell her to remember to just unplug that when getting out of the car. Because that now brings us up to just above the acceptable level. Um, beforehand, this added to what the um, GPS had us at. So those, the GPS and the Bluetooth had us close to you know, between 80 and 100 milliamps. So. so again, I'm pretty sure that just in the whole big spectrum, the whole big picture... This whole situation of keys dying is due to our voltage level just getting too low and aiding in corrupting EWS and key issues. So uh, we clearly had a draw. We've verified, rectified that. We'll avoid any further battery issues by unplugging the Bluetooth deal. And I think from here on out we'll go forward with key work to get the car started and running again and we should not have this uh, issue again hopefully because I want to get out of the doghouse and <laughs> make good with this customer okay uh, just a little side note so um, for everyone out there trying to hook up without the adapter and just solder the wires on the AK90. If you look at the wiring color, you've got red, yellow, black, purple, then it's a green dot and white dot. If you look at the harness, we don't have black and we don't have white. I started going by the colors according to the diagram just like every other programmer out there but that's the wrong way to do it you have to go by pin one and then count one two three four five six in order so because of that I am going to have to unsolder the ones that I've made wrong looks like the only correct one possibly here is the red one which is pin one which is the power pin and so now I gotta go in order uh, of one two three four five six and match the numbers instead of colors into its position so that's a, a way to avoid a um, a bad day where you let the smoke out of the box Okay guys, so let me get you caught up as to what I am going to do or attempt to do. This is the EWS that uh, I had in the car that had multiple keys made to it. Basically, the uh, last from the last video, the one that added key number 7 and had, I guess, key 8 and so on and so forth. 
So this is that same EWS. Now, uh, what I don't want to do, so I've got so many keys already made and I don't want to make another key and continue go on so forth when I've got so many already made. So the problem is when this keeps failing with the low voltage issue and loses its rolling code, there's no way to marry these two back together um, to get this to learn the code from the key. Now, apparently with this unit here, the AK90, you are able to sort of get around that and get these keys to start reading again with the EWS. And that's what I am going to attempt to do because I don't want to make another key when I've got so many keys already made. And I want to see if this can get those keys back onto the EWS. So that's why I'm reading this one that's got the, all the multiple keys already in its uh, EEPROM, I guess. And so... I've got it. I just read it. Um, I did have to hold one pin on there um, just because the soldering wasn't holding right. So I'm going to save it and then I'll continue on and show you what you can try to do to get your keys to get back uh, learned with the code and EWS. Okay, so in order to do this, let's take a look. So obviously we've got our EEPROM information there and let's see about uh, I think it is let's do a EWS analyze okay so that's that's what I was looking for uh, you notice how <laughs> we've got key one two three four seven eight nine so it was seven that I made last, um, eight uh, and nine were from the first go round. Okay, and so the keys that, if you remember, uh, the keys that I want to restore are going to be this key, which this is key seven, it's the last one I made. This key I don't want anything to do with because if you remember on the Autel, it was reading something weird and funky. Uh, I had like Volvo or Mitsubishi on it. So I'm not messing with this one. But that one is key 9. This one here is key 1. This one here is key 1. It's the original factory actual BMW one that we got the car with. So I'm going to restore that one. And this is the one that it came in with the first time when we uh, were first losing our code. So that is the chip there. This is key 8. So 1, 7, and 8 are the ones that I want to restore, let's call it. Um, apparently a way to restore them is to mark them here as or take the check mark off so one seven and eight right seven eight and so with them removed let's call it off of that list it lets the keys when they're inserted so basically before we do that we're gonna have to write this kind of file back into the EEPROM or back into the EWS right here um, this modified list write it back in stall the EWS back in the car key up the vehicle with one of the keys say number one and it will kind of like restore or relearn that code from the key uh, back into the EWS because the keys themselves are already written with EPROM, this EWS EEPROM's info and so it's just going to send the key on over and supposedly it will pick it up as like a starting point so we'll do that with each key that I want to restore um, 
key number eight I won't be able to do today because I've got to run and get this uh, blade cut. But for now, we'll be able to do one and seven and see if it works. So uh, I got to do right back to EWS. I got to hold this pin. So I am going to... So I will attempt to do that now. Okay, I am connected. That's the right one. So actually let let me save this um, with those keys kind of uh, unchecked. Let's see, save bin file. Let's try this. Okay, so that's saved, but before I, I, so my thought is to write, perform, write EWS, and open that file I just modified and load that up. But before I do that, let me hit read and then hit analyze, see if it pulls up the one with the check still checked or the modified one, which... I don't know if it'll pull the modified one because we haven't written to it. Okay, there we go. Let's, uh, let me not save this for right now. Let me hit analyze. Okay, just as we thought. So, you see all these are still checked. It's still all that same EEPROM. Uh, so now we should, let's go ahead and write. Okay. So it's written the file we opened. Let's uh, see if it, did write that uh, change. All right, perfect. So all we have to do now, supposedly, is um, let's see. We'll go ahead and put this back in the car. We'll bring the the two keys we want to get working, and yeah, hopefully it'll start the car and I won't have to make any more extra keys and waste the ones I've already made. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to put this one, this is key 7. Let's see. So that's in the in the reader there. Let's see. I want to hit test key. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Uh, there is listed as key seven. Okay. And let's. Here is the original factory key. All right, perfect. And it's key one. And then I am going to. I think you can. So the the chip four, I think it was what number eight. So I'm just gonna kind of hang it in there as I read the key. Let's see. All right, perfect. So. Got all our keys read. We got those keys uh, unselected. We've got that all written back into the EWS. Let's go ahead and install it and see what happens. All right, got uh, key seven EWS. Batteries already plugged back in. 
Um, let's go ahead and plug the EWS in. All right, so we've got that EWS plugged in. Uh, I believe this is still latched and locked, so okay. Let's pretend we're getting in. Key. Now I'm gonna key it up and leave it in there for a few seconds. And let's go ahead and try to crank. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. That's beautiful right there. I don't have to waste making another key. I can restore all the ones that I've made up to this point. And uh, <laughs> we won't... We should not be dealing with this problem anymore. But again, the cool, cool thing is we can restore these keys and have it learn its code again. So, key out. If you remember, um, let's put this here. You gotta wait at least 10 seconds. Uh, I actually saw it in that um, training manual uh, about the 10 second deal. So, basically, if you put this back in, uh, and I explained this in the other video. If you put this in within 10 seconds, it's still in its kind of uh, memory of the last key. So this could potentially be like a dead key. You put it in almost right away and you potentially could be uh, thinking it's the other key. So enough time has passed. Let's do the same thing. Now this key has not been used ever since the last ones were made so it's been over a year I'd say ah there we go all right <laughs> now we just have key 8 to do which pretty sure it's gonna work I just gotta assemble it get the blade cut and we will be back up and running with even more keys than what we uh, intended to be with Okay, so I kind of just wanted to quickly show as to why we're using the AK-90. Basically, a $30 tool off Amazon or eBay or whatever, as compared to a bigger, expensive, more elaborate tool. So, again, as I showed you, once you pull up the EEPROM and you hit this analyze portion, uh, it brings up this section where you can... In the used portion, you can select them or deselect them. This uh, locked deal, um, this is basically where you can deactivate or activate the usage of the key. Not really this um, used portion, basically, uh, which is more, it looks like, like a memory thing. Not a deactivate or activate type of deal. So... As far as what I'm talking about, uh, in the only place to pull up anything similar, I'll show you, with the auto, is right here in this section. Now it's similar sort of looking as far as uh, the key numbering and location and what's used, what's not. There's nowhere here in this section to basically uh, change the used to unused. Uh, it just won't let you. There's just no option, and that's basically one of the main reasons why you can't basically restore the key code with a bigger, more expensive tool, because it does not let you select or deselect the used portion. Now, let's see... Now, if we go here, so we went into Immobilizer, um, then build the vehicle, and see if we go here. If we go via Programmer. So, here, 
this is the locking status. You are able to change the, again, deactivate or activate the key. That's just if, say, you lose a key in the parking lot and you don't want a stranger who finds that key to come basically steal your car because they can at that point. If you deactivate the key that you know you lost, it won't be able to be used. So you can lock out a key, but you can't change this uh, status here. Just this enable disable. So let's go with key two. If we go disable. Okay. It's only changing this disable portion, not this used going to free. So that's uh, the downside is you can only deactivate and activate keys for usage. It won't let you do anything with that use status, which we clearly see is for basically being able to learn its code or learn the key again that was already made. So I just wanted to bring that up why a uh, inexpensive $30 tool for EWS work might be at some point a better option if you run into troubles. This guy obviously will let you make keys, add keys, so on and so forth, but if you get into some troubles, it looks like this guy might be able to bail you out better. Okay, uh, here lastly, we're going to try to prove out that the EWS power supply getting low is what's making the key code being lost. So I've got rigged up an external power and ground with this power supply unit. And we're going to have to, on that yellow, attach that. That's going to be key on. So what we're going to do or attempt to do right now, we're simulating uh, the car just sitting in a battery at 12 volts, like a good stable battery with the key off. So what I'm going to do is for right now, the main plan is to keep dropping the voltage from 12 down to say 9, 8, 7, 6, whatever it might take to try to get the key memory to be lost. So we're able to control the voltage uh, to the EWS and this is the constant 12 volt hot all the time that I believe when that gets dropped is what makes the EWS um, you know get faulty so we're gonna right now just double check um, so we've got the keys that we restored we're gonna see if it starts basically get a base and then go from there and at the same time, we are sort of monitoring on the scope. All right, so here we go. One, two, three. All right, and the scope. That's drawing a little more amps. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so. Car starts, if the car starts, key code is good, and we're independently supplying power ground to the EWS via that. So that's a good base. Now we can start dropping the voltage and see when we don't start. Okay, so that was just that quick capture. The blue channel is that uh, EWS to DME line that... Um, that we checked with the baseline so that's acting normal that is our power supply uh, which is our known good base so let's again start dropping this will go down and let's see how that acts once we lose the code so we're looking for it to not to crank okay so we're gonna drop the voltage by one volt increments uh, until we don't start so you want to place your bet? <laughs> what uh, I'm thinking, maybe around. I'm thinking about seven volts. Maybe we'll 
will stop. So, but we'll see. So we'll go one volt increments. Let's see. So down to eleven. It's on. It's applying. Let's see. Scope is running. Okay. Signal fine. We'll wait our 10 seconds and readjust. All right, 10 volts. Let's see. 10 volts still works. Yeah. Alright. You can see the voltage drop in there in the green channel. So let's see what 9.5 does. Still good. Hopefully we're getting close to prove out this point to uh, Mrs. d -Tech, who's being doubtful. So hopefully we can prove out the point. Alright. Eight and a half still works. Uh, here comes the seven, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Key all the way. Nothing. And look at that. Awesome. I'm still holding. I'm about to drop it. There it goes. So. Alright. Perfect. Looks like. I might get some free lunch. And you seven. Seven. Where is seven and a half? It's, it's still in the seven range. That Mrs. D Tech going to have to buy lunch. Buy lunch <laughs> and not leave me for Scotty. Good old Scotty Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To further prove out, let's scan it. I haven't cycled the key off. Uh, let's read the EWS. That key we were using was key 1. So we should have trouble code for key code, random code, whatever, for key 1. Key 1 still installed. Let's go ahead and read. Okay, here we go. Let's go into EWS. And let's look for that key number one. So right now, it's throwing that voltage supply code. It didn't throw key number one. Let's try again. So off. If you up the volts, it'll work. Uh, unlike, well... If it hasn't lost the code. Because right now it says voltage. It doesn't yeah. say key. Okay, so. What happens if you up the volts a little bit? So because it's got only the voltage code right now, not key code. Let's go up one. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. If not, I want to try to keep dropping. I want to lose the key code, but obviously It's not starting, it's having voltage issues. Okay, uh, so we're eight and a half. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so it has at the seven and a half, it's having voltage supply to it issues. That's where that code comes from. But it still has not, well, there you go, <laughs> at some point, 
So when it was at seven, it did. There's the key code one. Okay. So we and we we brought it up, and so we were. It looks like we were still able to use this because it hadn't lost the code yet when we brought the voltage back up. But let's see if we can use it now. Now that the code is up, let's see. So we're at eight volts. Let's wait a few. Okay, let's uh. Okay, so no codes right now. Let's go to seven. Let's go seven O. Oh. Okay, so seven O oh, even. Let's see. So nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, guys, so we continued to mess around with it. My objective was to try to get the key to not start the car and have the trouble code for the key code being lost come up. Now, we couldn't ever get that really to, to come up. And when we raised the voltage back up, the key was still usable. So the EWS at that 7.5 volts and lower gets... To the point where it can't operate, it doesn't see the key, so on and so forth. And then we're in that situation. So that kind of proves out basically what was going on when it had the draw. Now, what at that time, I, we couldn't comprehend or I didn't realize why I couldn't get it to lose the key to then I would have to take the EWS out, restore that key, and put it back in, so on and so forth, so it can learn it again. I think the reason why I couldn't get it to do that is because we wrote in to the EWS that file that has those keys unchecked. And so I think when it, I think it does lose the, the code. It just doesn't display it in trouble code mode, which I know we had the code pop up one time, but that was really only it. I couldn't get it to come up again. And then I, I think it loses a code, but then when we, raise the voltage back up, put the key in. I think it goes ahead and relearns it, uh, the key again, like how when it learned it after we restored the uh, the key on the EEPROM file. So I think that's why we just couldn't ever really fully kill it and make the key code get lost uh, because it just always re <laughs> relearned itself. So, um, but other than that, I think... It, this one was a tough one. It was a uh, kind of not long journey, but it was multiple things that came into play and that ultimately, you know, gave us the symptom of a dead car with a key issue, which that, again, that portion in the end was to prove out so that we don't have that situation happen again. And yes, you know, we saw when we dropped the voltage, EWS did basically lose the code or not operate. So... Um, it's been about, I'd say maybe two weeks or so, uh, no issues, which I didn't expect any. I did have a, um, a doubtful fan, let's call it. Um, and she, I don't even know if she's even, uh, on board yet. She's expecting it to die again. So I don't know. We'll see what, uh, how Mrs. Detect feels about it. Uh, the longer we go without any issues, but this one, there's a, a lot to pick up uh, and learn off of the EWS system. Um, you have a relationship between the key EWS. Those two have to be happy. And then EWS DME, those two have to be happy. Both controlling different things. Starter and then, you know, fuel injection, spark, so on and so forth. Everything has to be in conjunction, happy, working all together for the vehicle to operate properly. 
So with that, thank you for watching. I know it was a long one. Uh, believe me, it was way longer for me. But I enjoyed it, and I wanted to present it, make things right, and also uh, give an answer as to that rolling code lost uh, key issue that does seem to be problematic and that there is a solution. So ultimately, I wanted to share all of this uh, because there's many factors that people, uh, many things and factors that people can learn from this situation and get out of a jam. So um, that is all. Thank you again. And we'll catch up on the next. Yeah, the